So in the passage you read, Wittgenstein starts off by attacking a different kind of picture of meaning. And he's then going to later go on to suggest his own kind of picture of meaning. In this video, we're going to start with the sort of negative arguments. So he's attacking what he calls the Augustinian picture of language. We're going to try and get clear what the Augustinian picture of language is, and then we'll try and get a sense of what Wittgenstein's argument for it is. Again, as I said before, it's this is quite a this is a relatively obscure text, at least relative to, to the ones that we've talked about so far. So I'm going to be giving you my impression of what's going on in the text. But one thing we can talk about in class is whether there are other things that you guys drew from it. So let's start off by talking about the Augustinian picture of language. It's called the Augustinian picture because it's drawn from this passage from St. Augustine. Now the passage is reproduced in the text, I'm not going to read through it, but I'm going to draw out what I think the three main ideas in it are that Wittgenstein is going to attack. The first one is a simple thesis about meaning, which is that meaning is just a matter of standing for things. The reason why words mean things is because they stand for objects. So in general, what it is for a word to mean something is just for it to stand for an object. And this is a pretty fam familiar picture to us by now. I think Wittgenstein means to be sort of targeting all the different kinds of views we've been talking about. So he'll be targeting Mill's view of names. I think he will probably also be targeting Frege's view of names and maybe Russell's view of names as well. These are people whose, whose work Wittgenstein knew very well and he, and he engaged with extensively in his time. So one might think that the formulation is a, is a little bit crude it's not totally obvious that captures all of them, but let's take it for granted that that is sort of what he has in mind. So that's the first thesis of our Augustinian picture, that basically for a word to mean something is it is for it to stand for an object. The second thesis is a th thesis about language learning, and it's pretty complementary to the first thesis. The idea is that as children, we basically observe our elders pointing at things when they say words, and we come to associate words uh, with the things that are pointed at. So words mean things, words stand for objects. We come to learn how words mean things by just sort of observing people sort of pointing to things and uh, coordinating them with the things that are, that are meant. So we're going to use a slightly fancy word to try and communicate that. We're going to say that meaning is learned by ostension. So ostension just means pointing, basically. So we see people pointing at things and saying words, and that's how we associate words with the things that they stand for. The last thesis is about communication. So we have a thesis about words standing for things. We have a thesis about how they're learned. The last thesis is about what we do with words once we've learned them. And the last thesis of the Augustinian picture, as I'm going to understand it, is that what we do with words is that while we formulate some thoughts in our heads, and then we basically just find the words that are associated with the objects in the thought, and that's how we, that's how we use words. That's, how we, that's why we choose to say the things to each other uh, that we in fact do. So this is again a familiar idea. This is basically something we saw right at the very beginning, going back to Locke. The idea that communication, talking to each other, is a matter of thought sharing. So this is sort of the final piece of the Augustinian picture that Wittgenstein's attacking. So this is how we might write down our final thesis of the Augustinian picture, that communication, communication is just thought sharing. So all of these ideas are pretty familiar. They've kind of underlined all of the, of the things we've seen so far. So it's kind of interesting for that reason alone that Wittgenstein wants to attack them. These are very fundamental ideas to everything that we've talked about so far. So how does Wittgenstein attack them? How does, why does Wittgenstein think that this is a mistaken view of language? Well, as I said before, there's not necessarily like an explicit premise-conclusion argument. But the basic idea, as I understand it, is that Wittgenstein says, well, let's just think through like, some examples. And what we'll see when we think through enough examples is that these theses together, they're not necessarily well suited to cover every single instance of language using that we might observe. And indeed, he's going to say that, well, sometimes language works like this, but a lot of the time it doesn't. Then maybe even the majority of the time language doesn't work in the way that's laid down by the Augustinian picture. That's worth separating even at the very beginning, that there are sort of two claims there. One is that sometimes language doesn't work this way. And another claim, a stronger claim, is that even the majority of the time it doesn't work like this. The majority of the time we're not communicating according to the Augustinian picture. It's worth keeping those two things separate in your heads and asking yourselves, well, which if either 
as Wittgenstein succeeded in establishing. Okay, but as I, as I understand it, the main argumentative force against the Augustinian picture comes from the shopkeeper example that Wittgenstein discusses. So what happens in the shopkeeper example? Well, here's the case as Wittgenstein describes it. So imagine you go into a shop, there's a shopkeeper there, and you hand him a note that says five red apples. And what the shopkeeper does is the shopkeeper takes the note, he then goes look and looks at a table, and he first finds where the word red on the table is. And when he looks at the table, so the table is just a sequence of words with colours beside them, so the word and the colour beside it. He goes and looks for the word red, he sees what colour it is. So that's the first step. The second step is he then goes to the drawer marked apples. So we can imagine they're like, the shop is full of drawers, they have labels on them. The shopkeeper finds the, finds the drawer with the label that corresponds to what's written on the note. And then the final thing he does is he takes out of the drawer as many objects as there are uh, written on the note. So it says five, so what the shopkeeper does is he counts in his head to five, and as he goes through each number, he removes an apple. So it goes one, takes an apple out, two, takes an apple out, three, takes an apple out, and so on until he gets to five. And then he gives you the five red apples. I should add that the, the apples he's drawing out are the ones of the same colour as marked on the table. The same colour as was marked beside the word red on the table. So why uh, why is this an argument against the Augustinian picture? Like, what what... What is the Augustinian picture not getting right here? Well, think about why in this example do you say something to the shopkeeper? Or why, do you, why are you using language in a certain way, like handing him a note with something written on it? Are you intending to share some thought with him? And to think about what the, main, what the main goal of the sort of conversation there is, it's not to share some thought, it's to pr procure some result. Presumably, if you are asking for five red apples, it's because you want five red apples. Your main aim is to get the apples. Your main aim is not to share a thought. Your main aim is to get the, thought, the shopkeeper to do something. So that's a respect in which you might think the Augustinian picture is mistaken here. The point of communication there is not to share some thoughts. It's to achieve some results, to get something that you want. That's one way. And it's kind of the easier way to, to see in which he might think the Augustinian picture is getting something wrong here. What about the first thesis, that meaning is a matter of standing for an object? Well, basically, as I understand it, I think what Wittgenstein is getting at is that if we're thinking about what happens here, like how communication happens, it doesn't look like we necessarily have to think about what's going on here and the way that language is being used in terms of this idea of something standing for something. Because here's another way to think about how language is used here. The shopkeeper knows a bunch of rules that when he's handed a certain note, he follows and produces a certain output. So for instance, he knows that when he's given a, a note that mentions a certain colour, what he does is he goes to the table and he looks at the colour beside the word. So he finds the word on the table and he looks at the colour. He also had the, the drawers are labelled, so he also knows a rule which says, well, when you see the name for something, when you see a certain name on the note and it's also written on some drawer, you're going to take some objects out of that drawer. And then finally he knows to use the counting words in a certain way. So basically, once he found the, 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 the drawer corresponding to the type of item and you find and you know the kind of colour of the item that's that's involved, you take out as many items as you have to count up to to get to the number written on the note. And so I think he's thinking that when you properly understand the example, you see that there's really no need at all to mention this idea of standing for it. There's really no need at all to bring in this idea that for a word to mean something is for it to stand for a particular object. A very different way to think about it is basically just you have a set of rules that you follow where when somebody does something with language, you do something in response. So when somebody brings in a note with some, with some words written on it, the shopkeeper does something in response. He brings out some objects and he has internalized some rule for figuring out what to do in response to being presented with a note with some, with some words on it. To explain, as we'll see more in a moment, to, to, to really understand what's going on when people use language, all we need to do is just see what they do when they use it. That's really what is. That's really what meaning boils down to. It's just what what people do with language. 
rather than words standing for objects in the world. So the shopkeeper example, as I understand it, is an example that where, where Wittgenstein thinks the Augustinian picture isn't really getting it right. Really, we should not think about what's going on there in terms of words standing for things. We should think about it, as he's going to explain in a moment, of, in terms of meaning as word meaning as a certain kind of practice. Now, as I said, his, his criticism is not that the Augustinian picture is always wrong. Rather, the criticism is that it focuses on much too narrow a range of cases. So he gives one case where he thinks, like, maybe the Augustinian picture is, is kind of getting it right. So he imagines a builder who has an assistant, and the builder will call out various words like block, pillar, slab, whenever he wants those items. Uh, and the assistant has sort of memory, you know, knows in his he head some he knows that the words stand for things, and so whenever the word is shouted, he goes out and fetches a thing that corresponds to, to the word. So that, I think, is an example he thinks is where the Augustinian picture works. The criticism he's making is not that the Augustinian picture is always wrong, but rather that there are lots of different ways of using language that the Augustinian picture doesn't get right. It focuses on a much too narrow range of language, Wittgenstein thinks. And instead, he's going to give a picture of language which he thinks is not overly focused on one sort of special case. 